if I could get my thing to view differently than what it is, because it looks ridiculous. Alright, I'm closing down all my connections. I don't know what's going on with it. Sorry about this, folks. We are having some very technical difficulties. I don't know if it's OBS or if it's my internet connection or what. Um, it's been fluctuating like crazy. Uh, anyway, uh, so this will be part two. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think the, the collaboration project that we had you know, worked really well. Uh, world building, working with you guys is fantastic. So, <laughs> um, all right. So on to the next segment. Today's episode is brought to you by the word Ragnarok. Uh, the Ragnarok is a noun. It's defined as the destruction of the gods and of all things in a final battle with evil powers. It comes from the Old Norse, 1760 to 1770, uh, or thereabouts. It's from... Uh, Old Norse Ragnarok, or rag, sometimes pronounced Ragnarok, uh, equivalent to Ragna, which is uh, part of rain uh, of the gods. Rock means, which is fate. Sometimes it's uh, misread as Ragnarokar, which mean, which literally translates as Twilight of the Gods. All right. Cool so beans. the adventure begins. Uh, as I mentioned before, we are. We are using the 6S core system. Uh, you can find that, find out more information about that on the uh, web, the Harsh Realities website, uh, harshrealities.com, dot org. Sorry. Um, Joe, I have another question for you. Yo, could you move the Skype window up a little bit because both mine and Matt's name are somewhat cut off by your face. Uh, sure can. Oh. Matthew E. Weiss. Because Nordine and we Ben are kind of cut off. There you go. Uh, okay, so we've got a new doc coming, coming here. Uh, so I... Where is my well, I mean, we spent all that time on the collaboration document just to kind of, I mean, as personally, I feel like we spent a lot of time world building on that, that we should be able to keep that, but if we don't want to and start again, I'm okay with that. Yeah. I just think it would be kind of a waste if we didn't use it. Well, let's let's not worry so much about, like, the world as it, as it is. Uh, yeah, we'll have to worry about some of that as we develop it, but... I think the first the first thing we just start with is what genre we want to do, um, or even do we even want a genre? Because since this is system agnostic, maybe it'd be theme ag agnostic. Uh, where like we were talking, well, and that's and based on the world we created, it, that could be a, it could be a genre agnostic as well, because it can take place in different times, different uh, worlds, right. So, uh, let's see. How do we want? Do we just want to start with the adventure then, or or how do we want to set this up? Because the way I you usually have the, most experience. the way I usually do it is either come up with a a where the players start and then kind of work their way through the adventure. Uh, a lot of the time, I'll I'll get inspired by by Are something. We all are we writing an adventure or a core book thing? This is just adventures. I don't really worry about core core books or anything like that. Okay. So this is just a, a limited, you know, time frame. Maybe it's an hour. We can go anywhere. Go from uh, goal between an hour to two hour long uh, session uh, adventure, or have it be part of a larger campaign, but. Uh, most adventures, if they're really good, unless they're very well thought out, uh, players' attention span will only last uh, about an hour to two hours. So. Gotcha. All right, well, I so, had go ahead. a while ago when we were doing Elfwood, I had the idea of uh, three, it would be, uh, it was a total of four adventures. That would link together. Each would be played separately. Right. You know? 
Uh, I kind of I don't know if we want to use something like that, but it was basically you find item in one adventure, you find an item, and the second adventure you find the item, and the third adventure you find an item. Then when you have all three items, you combine them, and then you have to fight the main bad guy in the fourth. I mean, that was kind of a cool idea. It was a adventure train. See, I've that's pretty cool. I've written uh, my first adventure that was debuted at Gen Con. Uh, called Hello Beastie was written that way. Uh, where it was, you could play each adventure out of order, but yeah. uh, it was ideal was sat down for, you know, a good four or five hour block where you play it in sequential order. Um, and I kind of like that idea. I mean, with but with the model I was using, the fourth adventure would have to go last no matter what, but the other three could go in any order. Right. The light off there, Matt. That was awesome. I'm not. I'm not sure what that was. <laughs> that was awesome. It's like you had this really cool ambience thing going. I thought. It, I thought you. <laughs> I'm not sure what happened. Oh, there it is. Now I see it. That was awesome. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what Turn happened. Turn the lights man. off, dude. Like... That was awesome. <laughs> Whatever that was. That was yeah. That was really good lighting. I'm gonna have to watch Bring it back tomorrow. That great lighting. I'm gonna have to watch it tomorrow and screen cap that. <laughs> <laughs> now, now uh, the question is, is, is how can we keep that lighting, Matt? Was it the light? Was it a power fluctuation or? I don't, I don't know. The light just went off. On. <laughs> it's like whoa. Well, then turn know. off the light and see what happens. Your wife's playing uh, It's still a little tricky to get to right now. <laughs> just throw something uh, at it. Dang. Throw something at the light. <laughs> All right, so uh, the adventure starts. We can worry about the background and the the setting and stuff later. Uh, All the... adventure starts in the tavern. I mean, we could start there. Um, definitely. All adventures start there. Because I've had <laughs> I've I had kind of the running idea of of uh, everybody's unconscious on a train. I, I have an idea that I thought was going to be kind of cool. Everyone is chained up in a prison that's gladiators. Gladiators, fight. Okay. Is, is that you typing, or what is, what is that? Okay. <laughs> it's like... Sorry. Like, what is that? Joe that's started okay. the new collaboration doc, which we don't have yet, because he hasn't posted it to us. Uh... So we have an idea where they, they could, I kind of like, you know, it's actually cooler when they everyone wakes up unconscious somewhere, and that's how it starts, so I do like that idea, a leather to train, a prison, coliseum, uh, a spaceship. I just watched the, uh, well, listen to the Mummy of the Orient the Express, uh, the Doctor Who episode. And uh, there you go. I just shared it in the uh, the chat for us. Um, well, view only. I'm requesting access to that crap. You should, have, uh, you should have edit. Edit which email? The Ohio. Which email did you send us to edit? Whatever you guys, I, it's in chat. It's in Skype. I chat. clicked on a chat and it's a view only. But I just requested to edit it, so we're all good. You'll get a request email from me. Yeah, okay, good. so is everyone opposed to them waking unconscious in blah? Yes, I'm opposed to it profusely. No, I'm good. <laughs> that sounds good to me. Okay. You should have approval. So, unconscious waking. Waking, where are we going to wake up? In a cargo, or in a passenger. Uh, On a circus train. Near deadly animals. Yeah. Uh, on a passenger train? Yeah. In the drinking oh. car. In the, in the... What is that called? The bar car? I was kind of... The dining car. Dining car. 
right? Okay. Oh, do you want to do this like steampunk? Sorry, I was just thinking of a train. You could. Do a steam train. I just it's like steampunk. I haven't done anything yet. It's in space. <laughs> steampunk. In you space. could actually have it. Dude, totally do a space train. That's something that's kind of new. Steampunk space uh, train. So. Yeah, instead they built a train. So it would make sense for interstellar travel in a way. If they have a track, let's do it that way. Steampunk space train, I like it. Because that's kind of a really cool concept of, like, in your mind, seeing as a, it, they would make it like a track wormhole thing yeah. where trains would go through, and that's how their interstellar travel is. Now, is this a standard, like, historically built train, or is this a, uh, uh, like, futuristic? If it's in space, it has to be futuristic. Well, it could have it could have uh, the look of it could be very rustic. Oh, okay. Yeah, hipsters have taken over. <laughs> hipsters rule the world, and therefore everything is bet is uh is retro. It's, I mean, it, I mean, if you think about it, that's pretty much what the Hunger Games was. Is a bunch of hipsters. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's also what I, when I think steampunk, I think hipsters too, because a lot of times it's uh, it's something that looks it's kind of an old it's something new that looks kind of old. Yeah. Because the steam makes it look different. Blizzard Entertainment has jobs that fit your profile. Click here to subscribe to uh, apply. What? So that's what happens is they they okay. they got on the space train they they got knocked out and uh, now they're getting a job interview. <laughs> Dude, they wake up. <laughs> there we go. They wake up to a a guy in a business suit offering them jobs. This is they all of them. Uh, let's go. Let's pull triple X on this. Let's. They're all they're all waking up and. Uh, the entire adventure, the whole the whole essence of it is a job interview. <laughs> yes, and Samuel L. Jackson is the guy giving the job. Alright, so they wake up. In the dining car. Uh... Do they recognize any? Uh, are they? Do they have complete am amnesia? They don't. They don't recognize anybody. Do they know everybody from boarding the train? I. I no. I say basically. Have complete amnesia. Like they just don't remember the last like, maybe a couple hours, and so like they all of a sudden they were on a train and, like maybe they were making coffee and then, train. One person's like making coffee. One person's uh, was driving his car. Like just random. They were doing random normal things, and now they're on this train. They remember. They remember receiving the invite for the or the the ticket for the. Train. They were reading their mail. There we go. They received a ticket for a train. A bright light. And they were on a station platform uh, boarding the train. No, remember they're already in the train. I know. This is this is the thing that they remember. Oh. The last thing they remember. The players don't remember the last couple. Of, the only thing they remember is uh, receiving the train ticket for the train. They only. I would have just left it there. Receiving the ticket for the train. Done. That's all I remember. Okay. Yeah, not, I mean, like, if they're at the station and stuff, all of a sudden they'd be like, what am I here? No. Right. Let's make them wake up in the wake up in the dining car totally confused. I really want one of them to be like, oh, crap, my pot roast. What's the train's name? Should we name the train? Space Train. 
I don't know, let's have Matt name the train. We've been talking too much without Matt. Um, All aboard the crew. The Aussie Express. <laughs> <laughs> it, it has to be something like that. Uh, you just uh, do a tinker train? Yeah. Well, okay, so I'm, I'm thinking of, like, uh, Manticore stuff where they have, like, Invincible and things like that. So right. I'm, I'm thinking, like, the, um, I mean, it could just be called the Vigilante or something like that. I kind of like that name, actually. The what? The Vigilante. How about the Vigilant? That works, yeah. So that way they're they're traveling through the through the night, and you know. Uh, one thing I want to kind of specify when I was thinking about uh, space train, since it's on a track, you have to take it from world to world to world as a big loop, and there's no skipping from one world to another. That's just my idea. I don't know if everyone goes with it, but that's I mean that's what trains do. They don't take you from one world to another. They take you on a train ride, which means it would have to go. In a giant loop from one planet to another. Yeah. Magic carpet ride playing over the speakers on loop. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the train is called the Vigilant. Uh, what? My wife just texted me that something is it. Well, here I'll read it for you guys. I think something in Piper is dead and it's escaping through her butt. <laughs> that would be my dog. For the viewers who did not know. Okay, should we uh, should we incorporate an animal in this? Like maybe there the there is a wandering basset hound around the around the ship, and it's no. It is the guy. It's a basset hound who can walk, who can talk, and walk, and wears a suit. And it is the guy with the food cart. And a top hat and a monocle, like like fold out, British butler, Basset Hound pushing a cart. I was just thinking a uh, a uh, kind of like Frank off of uh, uh, Men in Black. Um, but well, uh, I was thinking a far more sophisticated version. Yeah. Well, yes. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, do we want to have it be uh, the the staff on the trains train as dogs? No, nah, I could. Think, I mean, we could, but I, I kind of like the the person giving them the job. Ha well, I guess yeah, the staff could be all different kinds of dogs or cats or animals of some sort. I actually uh, just um, listened to a um, one of the ladies from uh, Demicon. And she's writing a story about um, future canines and stuff that actually communicate with their owners. So that was kind of cool. Oh. Uh, the guy given the job, though, probably should be kind of look similar to the race, even if he isn't. Like, we, could do, if we want to go back to Men in Black, it could be like a little person inside of a robot. But <laughs> person behind uh, the job is human. We'll just have him be human. Okay. Um, and actually, I kind of... Uh, this idea randomly popped into uh, my head, <laughs> as all ideas do, uh, that they're actually from our Earth, and, uh, like, we didn't know that we were made part of this interstellar uh, train, the player, and they just kind of... The players or the... Uh, the players. Staff, players. The players are... Like, staff, well, of course they know. But, like, the players just all of a sudden are now on the space train from a planet that normally doesn't do interstellar travel. Right. Kinda let's like, have uh, everybody be part of the just, guide. Just to make it easier, let's have everybody be from the same time period. Um, yeah. yeah. And what the year 2525. No. And the the time period thing, I mean, we can we can change that up as maybe it's it's you know, this could be a filler adventure where it's like, oh, I have about an hour to run, and all my characters have fantasy stuff. They get transported up to a train. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can, or, yeah. That works. Folks, uh, what we're doing right now is we are, just to do a little bit of recap in case people are just tuning in, 
we are collaborating between all the three of us and chat on an adventure uh, that we're going to be doing. We're going to be writing the next uh, few weeks and see how that goes. Uh, more information about Wowcast and our adventure can be found at wowcast.com. That's w a o c a s t dot com. Uh, ben shared the links in the Twitter in the chat handle, so go on and check that out. Uh, okay, so the players are from our Earth. They wake up. Um, are they familiar? How will they react when they see the dogs? Is this something that's normal, or is no, this abnormal? I mean, I think that would be up to their GM, wouldn't it, or them, maybe. Yeah, that could be up to the characters. The familiarity I mean, with animal servants is up to the GM to decide based on players and setting. Alright, so say we have just a group of generic generic heroes designed for this adventure. We've got a, a tough guy, a smart guy, a bard, a uh, Sneaky guy. Rogue. Yeah, rogue. Sneaky guy. And a healer? Definitely an assassin of some sort. A medic. So we got tough, smart, bard, uh, sneaky, and medic. Um, genetic heroes, genetic players. Uh, we don't have to come up with anything specific on them. We can if you guys want to write character backgrounds, but I think we need to focus more on the NPC the adventure. And stuff. Well, yeah, they're supposed to. I mean, really, the character comes from the player, not from us. Yep. As much as yeah. I want to look at that. But yeah. Something we could do with the cast and explore this later uh, with the show is uh, once we get the adventure done, uh, bring some people on to, to play through it and see what they think. Uh, uh, I do actually think it would be kind of cool to add in like an appendix at the end. Where we each create one of the where we're, all the characters are created, so if anyone wants to grab one from the appendix, I like that. They can. Pre-made characters. Yeah. I like that. Uh, okay, so they wake up with they wake up in the train car. Um, kind of fuzzled. Confused. Who's the first one to talk to to them? Do they are they left to explore and see what's going on first, or do they get like a handheld where the the owner of the train pops on and says something to them? Oh, uh, I think I think it'd be it'd be interesting if like um, the dog like one of the dogs was the main like. You know, if one of the the because it's it's usually going to be one of the one of the um, help that that like discovers something wrong. Well, he discovers they're up, so he's like, "Hello, would you? I see that you're up. Would you like some coffee or something like that?" You know. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll call it. We'll call the first one that. Butler, and he is he is a Butler great, the Basset. Great Dane. No, the Basset's pushing the cart. Yeah, and that's what I thought we were doing the you food or coffee first. Okay. Yeah. The Great Dane is, uh, let's see. Dennis. Dennis. No, De <laughs> well, De Dennis the Great Dane. Uh, I like that one. Okay, so Dennis. Butler, the. What is Dennis's Dennis. job, though? Yeah, he'll be the one to greet them. There we go. Dennis the bartender, so. Uh. So one offers you a food, and if you want anything alcoholic beverage, go ask Dennis, and they point over to the Great Dane. Okay. Well, hello. Do you like me? Well, hello. The brown based human humanoid greets you calmly. 
and we can go through details in the adventure later. <coughs> some of the some of the uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that, I'd definitely call humans Terrans, you know, just kind of going with that kind of natural space group. Uh, they're from the planet of Fido. Basset Hound Greets <laughs> players. Uh, K90, uh... Invites them to refreshments Look around and order any refreshments. Uh, if asked, he says all your expenses. He says this is quite odd, but all your expenses have been covered thanks to the something corp, maybe? Something Corp, that's what I was thinking. Uh, Thanks to the, the something... Pulp Fiction Corp. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to the Benji Corporation. <laughs> Thanks to uh, Samuel L. Jackson Corporation. What? <laughs> Sammy J. Corp. Thanks to uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. What? Uh, okay, Something Corporation, we'll figure that out later. Um, Test reactor. <laughs> that works. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Great Dane is the bartender. Other passengers act like. Are other passengers waking up, or do they just simply tell the players that they they were here when they got here? I was assuming there wasn't any other passengers in this car. Uh, I mean, because the guy's going to want a private meeting. Well, that's just it. I don't... I, I would like to leave the the interview uh, or the, the meeting of the guy till the very end. Like, the player... Leave this very open-ended for the players to figure out. Oh, I thought he was going to come in and greet them and give them a mission on the train and the rest of the train cars are full of people. It's just their one that isn't, but we could actually do it that way, too. Uh, how about when the players, when all the players have woken up and refreshed themselves, people start walking in like a normal passenger train. If asked, the passengers act like normal aliens passengers what we gotta um, see is they're probably the only humans on the train there's definitely some Vulcans I'm gonna put some uh, people. the players are the uh, the only of their species on the train that way if if they get abducted from like a, a fantasy realm, then they can... Okay. Um, it can easily be dropped in. Like dwarves and gnomes and stuff like that. Maybe well, that's... Katie, uh... Maybe that's what... Uh, the interview... The ultimate interview is. Is the guys... The guys uh, like Van Staten, where he's gathering up all these races and uh, taking them to his, uh, his museum world or his zoo world kind of thing. That could, I mean, yeah, so he, he's based, or, or there's that, or he could be testing the the planet based on these five people to see if it's ready for interstellar travel. Or the zoo, or the collector. Either one works. I like them both. How about both? <laughs> yeah. Oh. One person, like the, uh, the actual boss is, you know, the the, the Samuel Jackson. There's two people. How about this? There's two different people, two different ways they could go on it. Like, just give them a choice. There's two different people they can meet. One is, yeah, as you were saying, I think you were going in the same direction as I was. 
Yeah, bo- give them both options. Give the players both options at the end. Well, I was thinking the end, like, one way on the train leads to pill a, pill, the red pill, the other one leads to the blue pill. Depend like, the guy in the front of the train wants to turn them, keep them as a zoo. The guy in the back of the train wants to see if they're ready for interstellar travel. Then there's a guy randomly in the train who uh, wants to kill them because they're not his race. I could see, his, I could see adding. Uh, maybe that's what maybe that's what starts the the adventurers looking around uh, beyond this train is like there's an explosion. Um, there's a Dalek after on a the short train. while. There is an explosion in one of the rear cars. You're starting to shed, Kitty. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit, Kitty. Time to get the brush out and brush your poop, uh, cap. <laughs> Matt is staring off into the middle of distance. Matt shaking I know, I just say I don't want to... <laughs> <laughs> We're keeping this clean, folks. Uh, let's see. What else? Uh, I said, just... <laughs> no, I was, I was looking at the feed, and Matt's just been staring off into the middle of the distance. Yeah. He's editing. We're playing yes. Diablo. Uh, We're editing play. Diablo. Editing Diablo. Like Blair and I were talking the other day, it's like, get get with uh, the guys from Respawn, and it's like, hey guys, uh, I found these bugs. Like, 300-page report on... on this software bug, uh, and here's how to fix it, and then the the dev team's like, uh, so this guy from Nebraska writes these really detailed QA reports, and how the heck did he get our source code to try to fix our problems? <laughs> it's like, shh, just go with it. Um, okay, the... A red light. You're playing like a dog kitty. You're funny. Sorry. Will they play? Will the kitty's they, trash. Will the kitty play fetch? Well, she's chewing on the tail of the thing because I keep jumping in her face. <laughs> I was using it to comb her hair. Okay. It is nine forty-nine, guys, according to my clock. So. Oh, jeez. This is awesome. Okay. This is fun, though. Um, yeah, gotta finish this adventure. Go. <laughs> the red light um, glows. Uh, so, the the guy trying to uh, save them is named Matt. The guy trying to zoo them is named Ben. The guy trying to kill them is named Joe. <laughs> Works. Uh, red light goes throughout the train, directing passengers to their seat. think about one of Jared's characters who play we play in D and D, uh, and well, let's just think of it as the Captain Kirk in a way. We have a guy who's like Captain Kirk who uh, he wants you know he's got conquest he needs to do to every species he sees. <laughs> Don't we all? Don't. We all? <laughs> uh, this guy goes. I okay, need to so. Tap that. It's, Which one uh, of you is male? Female? <clears throat> it's 9.50. Uh, I think this is a really good place to stop. Um, yeah. The uh, For next week, I'll work on some of the dialogue between these, these things uh, within this first opening scene. If you guys want to come up with uh, some backgrounds for, say, the butler, the Bassett. Uh, I'll take the Bassett. And uh, Matt. If if Matt's, if Matt's in a place that he can write, I don't I know I don't want to pile yeah. more onto him. Um, possibly. <laughs> I 
weird. That was a weird thing. Anyway, but yeah, possibly it just because right now is rent season, so it's yep. crazy. Speaking of which, <laughs> if you're at the at the local Renaissance fairs, you might run into Matt and his lovely wife Lisa as part of the Evan Guard cool. Improv. Yeah, we've lost you. That occasionally happens where Joe just gets lost. I'm here. <laughs> I know, but oh. your mic cuts out every once in a while. Yeah. Uh, so well, now that Matt heard it too, it's real. It's <laughs> not my imagination. Well, for uh, for those of you who are at Renaissance Fair, that local Renaissance Fair, uh, you might uh, see Matt and his wonderful wife Lisa at uh, there for the Evangard Improv. Matt, when's your uh, next performance? This weekend. <laughs> Where at? So we'll be at the the. Nebraska Renaissance Festival, or the Renaissance Festival Nebraska, whatever one it is that's the festival. <laughs> there's there's a difference between the fair and the festival now. Yeah, because that's right, not confusing. It's at the, it's at the and, building. And, and, and if you are there, help Matt beat his wife for once. <laughs> yes. Actually, actually, this time uh, we're just doing street characters, so uh, we'll just have fun playing with people in the streets. But um, <laughs> yeah, our uh, next show is... Uh, it, actually, at the Amana Colonies, um, the Iowa Ren Fest, at the end of the month. Nice. So, that'll be our next show. Very nice. Um, for more information about uh, Matt and Ben and myself, you can visit us over at wowcast.com. That's W A O C A S T.com. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at Word Art Online, the number one. And. Uh, Guys, I think uh, it's 9.53. i got to upload these and uh, take a leak. So I think we can call it. So for all of us here at the Word Art Online Studios, we wish you all a fond farewell and good night. Bye.